Mm-hmm. Welcome to Diary of an Ex-Ho. I'm Sherry Hardman. I'll be your ex-ho. And today's guest is Jocelyn Boyer. So Hi. sit back. My enjoy name the is episode, Jocelyn Boyer. And remember I the old am a saying, comic from Oregon. Always I a go by she, her. When you're a ho. I have been divorced and I'm currently separated going through a divorce, but 100% single. Um, and I also am bi, if I haven't said that already. You got it. You got it all. All right. So we always start every episode out with a Mary Shag kill. And um, just as a heads up, we've also added a new segment where we have to spin the wheel of questions. So we'll see how that goes. But what? in Mary Sh- in Mary Shag kill, I always try to like uh, cater it to the person, but I don't know you. So I like looked at your page and I can see that you're very... Um, I can see that you're very progressive. So I just uh, looked up the least problematic celebrities <laughs> for your Mary Shag kill. So <laughs> hang on and I will go get that. Okay. <laughs> All right. You can see that? Mm-hmm. All right. So you're going to marry one, you're going to shag one, you're going to kill one. We have Brendan Fraser, Keanu Reeves, and Mindy Kaling. Oh, I'm definitely, I'm so sorry to Mindy because I do love her, but, oh, you know what? Nope, I'm changing my mind. I'm (laughs) sorry. I'm sorry, Brendan. You're, I will always love you in the 90s and in Mrs. Winterborn, my favorite rom com, but I gotta kill you because I'm not Mary Keanu. Whew. Honestly, right. That is easy. And mm-hmm. I'm gonna shag Mindy because she will be a fire cat in bed just from her oh. show. I'm like, yeah. All right. Good call. So bye bye, Brendan. Somebody's gotta go, you know? Yeah. Um, okay. Now I got to figure out where I'm going to put that other little segment. But anyway, so uh, (laughs) when it comes to sex, would you rather watch or be watched? Oh, I'd rather watch. Okay. Reasoning? um, Cool. I was hoping I could go into it. Um, so the reason is I love watching sex. I love watching people like get pleasure. Um, and I love talking about it, but actually having someone watch me makes me so nervous and feel uncomfortable and vulnerable. So then I'm not enjoying it and I'm not going to like have the best time. Um, and sex is already a very like delicate thing with me. Okay. All right. When you were growing up, oh, we lost you. Let's wait for you to come back. There you are. Almost. I am trying to up oh, there. Oh, fuck. There we are. Zoom was like, you didn't press OK. So as soon as I pressed OK, I came back on. Okay. Whatever. We can. Uh, we can cut that out. <laughs> Sorry no about that. Deal. It's okay. We're not live, so it doesn't matter. I see you're wearing your Dirty Angel Entertainment shirt. Shout out to High Jinx. Yes. Oh. Um, all right. When you were growing up, when you were young, what did your parents or whoever raised you call private parts? Uh, They were pretty, t- like my mom was technical. She called it vagina, penis. Um, and that was because like, she also was exposing me, not intentionally, but unintentionally exposing me to sex because they would like leave things out. One time I walked into the bathroom and all my mom's like sex toys were on the bathtub, like drying and I was like, what in the world? And she's like, these are sex toys. They're used for pleasure. And I'm like, this is too much information at this age for me. So, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> um, 
So uh, were your parents married like when you were growing up? They got married later on. Um, my my stepdad uh, was the third guy she had married by the time, like, yeah, she settled, so. Okay, all right. So would you say your parents were good role models for how a relationship should go? Hell no. Hell no. They were a good role model for what you should not do <laughs> in a relationship. Do you think that affected you and your choices? Yes. You got a hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, Thank even you. like, even like growing up because I, I saw how my parents were and I saw my grandparents, uh, like my grandma, instead of leaving my grandpa after he did some like stupid shit, uh, she just moved into another bedroom and stayed separated, but together, like they never separated. They were always like still married, but she hated him. She like legitimately would just be so mean to him. And he, and I never knew growing up, like what caused that, like why she just wouldn't leave and start a new life. And now as an adult, I can totally tell why. Mm hmm yeah, it's interesting. Like if, when you're young, you don't really think of your parents or grandparents as people. They're your parents and grandparents, but they all got their 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 baggage. Um, all right, now we're gonna talk about like uh, what I call your sexual awakening. So it's like the point in time when when you notice that there was something going on in the world that you weren't previously aware of whether it was uh feelings in your body or your mom washing her sex toys in the bathtub whatever it was that really started uh awakening you to sex was going on can you tell me a little bit about that um oh i'll be honest i'm a little damaged so like my awakenings weren't um funny or up or like you know humorous it was uh I was sexually assaulted when I was eight and then I had to go to court when um after it happened and retell what he had done in great detail and at the time the the system was different so it wasn't that he he didn't do it it was she wanted it So that's why like my relationship with sex is very like uh different and fragile. It's like I enjoy talking about it. I enjoy thinking about it. I enjoy like um watching it, but actually like doing it, it's not the same thing as a, what I'm picturing in my head it feeling like. Does that make sense? Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah, unfortunately, a lot of people have those uh, unfortunate sexual awakenings. It's kind of like, it's not like you're awakening. It's like someone's going, wake the fuck up, and you don't want to wake up. I get it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but I will say on the flip side, with, uh, with that, I just want to really touch on something. Because when I was about to lose my virginity, it was a big deal to me. And I had watched like my best friend go through some shit after she lost hers. And I was like really nervous about that. And she flat out told me, it's going to hurt. It's going to be uncomfortable. You're not going to enjoy it the first time. But after that, it gets better. And I was like, thank you for telling me that. <laughs> so I go in prepared for what's happening. A lot right. of people will be like, it's beautiful. So yeah. Knowledge is power. I mean, that's it's a phrase that's thrown around, but it really is true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like in my in my act, I do a, a five minute set on menopause because nobody tells you about it, and you don't know what's gonna what's happening to your body. Like you just kind of hear rumors of old ladies talking about stuff, but I think it's really important. Mm -hmm. You know. So yes. Yes. All right. Let's lighten it up a little bit. Let's see. Um, tell me about. Who was your celebrity crush when you were younger or crushes? 
I had the biggest crush on Jonathan Taylor Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> like, who didn't? Okay, who didn't? Um, I also was just like more, I think, boy crazy. So I had a crush on everyone. <laughs> Any like boy, Devin Sawa, Sawa. It, I I think I said that um, from Casper, like when he turns into a real boy. Uh. <laughs> and then as an adult, oh, my God, on Nikita, whew, had a whole new crush again. Well, you know what you like. All right, let's go. <laughs> I think this is a good point. We're going to go over and we're going to try this other thing that I'm doing. So let me go grab it. Okay. Oh, it's the will. The will of mystery. Yeah. And I, excuse me, but I, I need to figure out how to get out of here. Okay. Spin the wheel. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> we're going to spin the wheel and you have to answer whatever the question is. You only have to do one. Okay. Okay. This is our first time doing this. So if it sucks, we won't ever do it again, but let's give it a try. I'm excited. Do you actually enjoy giving oral sex? Yes. Any details on that or we're just going with oh, yes? Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm trying this new thing called not talking too much. <laughs> oh. Well, this is a talk show, so go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so okay <laughs> um again i like seeing other people get pleasure so like oral sex is fun because uh you get to like help someone receive pleasure whether it's a blowjob or licking some pussy i i've never licked ass i'll be honest it's just i cannot get past the poop part i don't care how clean it is i know i know i know i just i can't do it i can't like it's just it's it's like when you i started eating seafood again recently and it's just like the texture and the slight taste. I'm like, oh, it's not as what I remember growing up loving. And now I'm kind of like, mm, I'm not really a big fan of it sometimes. But mm -mm. Mm -hmm. and that's not like an into window to anything else. It's literally <laughs> about seafood. <laughs> <laughs> For all the men out there. Uh, do you remember, like, well, you kind of talked about Casper, but a mainstream movie that had uh, a love scene, maybe, or a sex scene that really, like, did it for you? Brought up some feelings in you one way or another. Uh, man, I definitely knew that women were sexy as fuck when you started seeing in movies like them not focusing on negative parts of women's bodies but like like the collarbone such a such a sensual sexy spot and on women it's like just amazing so i don't really have a movie i'm trying to think i know like oh angela bassett mm, mm, mm. Any movie she's in, so mm -hmm. fucking hot. And she just makes everything so much like sexier in this. Yeah. So, yeah, any movie or TV show she's in, anything, anything. Uh, even now, when she plays a cop, uh, it's like, fuck the cops, but whew, I would fuck her. <laughs> uh, do you watch porn? So, and yes. And uh, I, um, oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Favorite like porn? Uh, I've, yeah, I've been into, um, again, group, like <laughs> group sexes where like it's not, uh, the creepy, like down in a basement. I don't even know, but like it's more of like, everyone is at a party enjoying themselves and yeah 
just like that seems fun okay have you ever done any kind of group sex work yeah well <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, sorry. Um, I have been in sex work uh, in my 20s. When I was 18, I was a stripper. I actually was a stripper for a few years off and on. And that taught me a lot in my own sexual preferences and what I want and don't want so yeah and then also I've done I've done other sex work um and recently I've been on webcamming which is fun hmm. that's a lot of fun okay cool what is your definition of amazing sex when you when you both orgasm and so you definitely can tell when you both do and that would be amazing it doesn't have to be like long and you don't have to be like all sweaty and hot I hate getting hot and sweaty just like I just want to come <laughs> and like not feel so hot and sweaty like I'm gonna die <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I'm so, anti-hot and sweaty myself um how's your mm -hmm. body image? my body image yeah um I actually have body dysmorphia um so I struggle with my body image a lot which is why doing uh sex work like stripping and webcamming have really been out of my comfort zone um but it's something that has also made me feel very empowered and made me look at my body in different ways and so yeah I oh and I also have done nude uh modeling for an art class that was full by the way and their heater oh. went out and it was freezing oh no <laughs> well it probably made your boobies look good you know okay I, my boobs always look good so I don't have to worry about that <laughs> I was just worried about because you like the model I had to come up with all the poses and I didn't realize that um well I realized no I did realize that I didn't realize how many poses you would need to do because when um when my friend told me about another comic she was like hey you know come up with a scenario like oh I'm going to check the mail now I'm going on a jog now I'm doing this waving to my neighbor and I'm like okay so I'm in the shower I'm like let me practice this I'm going to the mailbox naked nope this feels weird <laughs> I'm gonna pose like this <laughs> and so <laughs> the first two minutes is 15 second poses and you have to keep rotating your body ever so slightly so the whole class can see different angles of you oh and you're on a stage okay which is great for comics like ooh, put me on a stage in a full room hell yes but they don't talk and they don't there's no noise it's just music playing and their their pencils you can hear their pencils just going just going at it just and you're just like ah 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 and I'm already nervous. And when I'm nervous, I start talking. And I start joking. So I started making jokes. <laughs> and I got chuckles. But also, I couldn't look at anyone in the eye. I couldn't do eye contact. Because as soon as I did eye contact, I felt like we both caught each other, like, making porn from across the way and being like, oh! I felt guilty. I was like, I'm so sorry. I will avert my eyes. <laughs> That sounds like an absolute nightmare to me. I don't know. <laughs> I hope they paid you good for that. They, oh, yes. And I will say that, like, it was after after I was able to uh, relax, um, it was fine. I saw a couple of the drawings. 
<laughs> and like one person made me into a cartoon. <laughs> And I just, and, and he picked the pose where I, cause I had to do a, uh, two minute pose. So the first thing that came to my mind that would be comfortable was all my knees. And, <laughs> and so <laughs> I thought it would be funny if I prayed, it had the praying position too. Right. Mm -hmm. And Yeah. It was hilarious for the first 30 seconds. And then after a minute, I was like, holy shit, <laughs> this mm. is a lot longer than I remember. <laughs> so, yeah. What's the best compliment you've ever got on your naked body? Oh, on my body? Mm -hmm. All my, my boobs. It's been my boobs. Um, oh, no, 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 no. I will say somebody made me feel really good because I had applied to uh, be on a show and the only requirement was like you have to be fat and I was like oh that's perfect that's me I've been called fat I feel fat I I think I'm fat um my clothes say I'm fat my doctor says I'm fat like I, this is me yes um and so I was telling somebody about it and he was like I mean, those thighs, those thighs are fat. And I was like, oh, thank <laughs> you. Okay. <laughs> let me, <Yeah. laughs> let me uh, feel better about myself. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Uh, do you have any sexual regrets? Hmm. Uh, yes, I will say I put myself in awkward and uncomfortable uh, positions in order to see if I could save a relationship. And it ended up just making me feel dehumanized. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a lesson a lot of us learn the wrong way unfortunately uh, what about a bucket mm -hmm. list are there anything that you still would like to do that you've never done uh, i mean yeah there's lots of stuff i want to try um i'm just like nervous about it like i said that i get nerve. i wouldn't want to be watched uh having sex and i i really am like mm, and I can't really watch myself yet but I want to be able to get to a point where I could make a porno and feel good about it not because like I want to make all this money but because like that would make me feel like I finally have uh come to love my body and love myself I get that so mm -hmm. what is your what's your Instagram it's uh, just Joshin without the G with Joss, J-O-S. Or you can look me up by Jocelyn Boyer. I should pop right up. Um, and then I also have a pot of Portland. If you like weed, um, hijinks and I, shout out to hijinks and Courtenay. Um, hijinks and I just started a addition to pot of Portland. We do flower hour and that is going to be a web series and it's going to be like, uh, dropping on 420. We have already recorded three episodes. We're recording another episode tonight. Because we're going to try this game, please. <laughs> Do you smoke weed? Do you like weed? Yeah, a uh, little bit. I get too high. I just, I can't handle it. I don't like feeling stupid mm -hmm. and and that and paranoid. And that's how I always feel. So. Oh, yeah. That's not fun. That's, that's the um, unfortunate, like, one of the possibilities when you get stoned. And uh, I've definitely been there. So I, de I think that if you ever do want to dabble into it, like edibles are a really great way right now because you can microdose them and um, 
and they really get down to the terpenes and what the terpenes do. So like if a, if an edible has lavender in it, it's going to be more of a calming effect. And then like even the strain or even the, um, well, even the hybrid indica or sativa affects everyone differently. So like for indica with me, it like wakes me more up up it makes me feel more alert I can do more things and then like hijinks was saying indica just puts him right down he's gotta have sativa because he's got shit to do so um it's interesting and then yeah I was just curious because I've been talking about weed and I'm like I should have asked you that yeah oh yeah I'm uh yeah I I have a joke about um I got nothing against weed. It's legal. Do what you want. But how many times in one day does a person need to lose their keys? You know, <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> and how I prefer alcohol, because when I'm drinking, the only thing I forget is that I'm married. So <laughs> <laughs> that's right. good. All right. Nice. So we're at the point now where um, I'm just going to let you tell me a story of your choice. Okay. It doesn't have to be funny, but it can be a funny, just some entertaining story that has to do with sex. Oh, okay. That has to do with sex. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. So this is actually, um, I am very, my camera keeps falling. I am very, very clumsy, like stupid clumsy. And I just have no <laughs> balance really. So when I was a stripper, Picture me trying to walk on like 12 inch heels that are like super skinny and trying to like walk fast <laughs> to the stage. And so one time I was on stage and I went to do this pole trick that I've done a million times. So I wasn't even like really worried about it where you hook your uh, leg around the pole and then I spin uh, upside down and I take off like my top like that's my little pole trick that I do I'm like Ooh, look at me so um I went to do that and I just fell right over <laughs> and but it was super embarrassing because not only do you have people at the rack but my best friend who was dancing with me um that also made it a lot better too was sitting at the rack and she has no subtlety she is just so funny she's like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and I had jumped right up I was like I'm fine I'm fine and she's like are you okay I'm like shut up <laughs> <laughs> distracted <laughs> I'm like for some reason like I don't know so, what the floor, uh, the floor is like go ahead <laughs> the floor is slippery because you have to uh you have to clean the pool every time because right. you know it, it it becomes slippery so you're spraying you're supposed to spray the towel which sometimes gets on the floor and then you step in it and then boom so it can be yeah. dangerous uh i know that a stripper when i was there had lost her grip on the pole while she was up high 